One of our members has sent me a very interesting report. It covers the cost of translations for the public sector. In other words, or, or for interpreters or translation of literature from English into other languages. Uh, here are some of the figures. They surveyed 247 NHS trusts and found that 64.4 million was spent by the NHS over the last three years. And this is a 17% or 9.4 million pounds increase on the previous three years. It amounts to 59,000 pounds a day. The NHS is spending 59,000 pounds a day translating from English into other languages. The pattern is the same across the public sector. Uh, it mentions that in 2011 there was a report, and there's been, by the way, a lot of immigration since 2011, a report that said that the Ministry of Justice has spent over £100 million in a six-year period translating out of English. Uh, at the same time, 142 courts across the country were closed due to lack of resources. Local councils spent 20 million in 2009 alone, and there was evidence that much of that had not even been used. And the police spent 82 million over a period of three years. Now, the report makes a few recommendations, but the one that stands out to me is translate, make your literature in simple, basic English rather than translating. This would encourage people to learn English. A spokeswoman for St. Bart's Hospital in London said that over 140 languages are spoken in that area. There's something. But one presumes that all the hospital literature is not translated into all 140 languages. So how is it that the people who speak, for example, a more obscure language, how are they managing to get by? presumably by learning to speak English. So if they can, why can't everyone? The report goes on to say that, or to ask the question, whether or not this is helping with integration in our country. Well, to no one's surprise, no, it's doing the very opposite. It is a major, if not the major, obstacle to integration. It is keeping this country fractured. And my question is, what's the end game here? When does this stop? Immigration continues by hundreds of thousands a year. So are we going to continue to spend dozens of millions of pounds a year of taxpayers' money translating out of English, a, a something which has the effect of causing greater and greater division in our society? Over 50,000 people in Birmingham alone can't speak any English. Is this what politicians mean when they talk about integration? They are doing the opposite of encouraging integration. And this country is, is ha people in this country have less and less in common and are less and less likely uh, ever to have anything in common. This is the end of a country as we know it. One of the things that binds a country is a common language. And this division, this separation, this fragmentation is encouraged across the public sector at cost of millions and millions of pounds. This is the cost of multiculturalism. It's costing us financially and worse still, it is costing us our country. We must end multiculturalism. People must speak English. Those who are here must learn to speak it. And one way they learn to speak it is if they have to speak it. We must also end any further immigration of people with zero command of English. This must be a primary requirement, both for them and for the future of this country. How can a person get by without speaking the main language here? They can't. It's for in everyone's interests that we speak English and that we have at least that in common. The other way, of course, the other vital way of encouraging integration is equal enforcement of the law. But that's another matter. We must, as I say, bring an end to multiculturalism, restore British culture and the languages of this country only. It's in everyone's interest that we do so. But most importantly, it's in the interest of the future of this country. If we want there to be a Britain in a few decades' time, we can start with something as simple as requiring everyone to speak the same language. The cost of multiculturalism is far, far too high.